please welcome the founders of High Smile to tell their story, Alex and Nick. Hello everyone, how are you all? Thanks for the introduction, John. So, I'll quickly start by introducing myself and Nick. Um, we're both the owners and founders of High Smile. We started High Smile two years ago, um, and in two years, we're now the biggest teeth widening brand in the world. So, today, what I'm going to be discussing with all of you is exactly what did we do to penetrate and infiltrate the market and really set ourselves um, some market share there. So, yeah, so the focus of our talk is going to be about attention and how to break the noise in your market. So we'll begin and kick it off with attention. So what is attention and what attention are we looking for in the context that we're speaking of as marketers? Um, attention is where your target market is spending most of their time. It's not where they're saying they're spending their time, but where they're actually spending their time. What are their behavioral habits on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I'm pretty sure everyone in the audience has one of these things. Whether it's an iPhone, Android, everyone's got a smartphone in here. Can I have a quick show of hands if anyone doesn't, if anyone's got a nice Nokia brick? <laughs> Pretty safe to say everyone in this audience has a smartphone. On the smartphone, people, their attention is divided through social media apps. Whether that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever the social media platform is, the chances are the majority of you in this room have an active account on one of those platforms. Again, can I get a show of hands of who has an active account on one social media platform? Any? That's probably the majority. So it's fair to say the attention is on the mobile phone. The attention is across social media. Even today, like as we're driving up from the Gold Coast, people are driving, there's billboards left, right and center and people are driving 110 kilometers an hour and they're texting someone or they're on Facebook, they're tweeting or they're, posting an Instagram post. So even in the most important circumstances when it's life or death situations, we're still on our phones. So that's where the attention is. Now you recognize where the attention is, you recognize your target market. Um, so then how do you infiltrate that space? How do you break into that? Yeah, so that's the real gray, gray zone, I guess, if you want to think, where most people and most businesses aren't really putting too much time is that focusing too much, okay, how do I get a direct return on investment on my marketing campaign or on what I'm posting on social media? So for us, the number one thing that we really want to push and the thing that we really want to communicate today is don't be too romantic about having a direct res uh, result from what you're putting out on these social medias. Um, we fi we're finding particularly one of the big things with businesses and big businesses, it's very hard how do I, as a worker, come in and communicate, I want to infiltrate an idea without focusing too much on return on investment? That's the key question that needs to be asked in every business. How do we have this conversation? Um, now, in regards to that, the, if we want to talk about the grey zone versus the black, black and white, I think a lot of the time what we are focusing too much is the black and white. And Yeah, so attention, the first thing we spoke about, attention is the black and white. Attention's on the mobile. Back in the day, it was on TV, it was on radio, it's on billboards, it's on print media. That's where the attention is. That's black and white. That's non... You can't really argue that case. The grey zone... So the black and white is knowing that the sport's karate. The grey zone is whether you're a first-day beginner or a black belt. That's where you flex your muscles and you show your skills. You actually stand out from the rest and you break the noise in the market. So the way you do that is by first understanding people and what they, understanding what they want to see and what content they want to see. So we talk about social media and what we've done in the two years of starting High Smile. Our marketing budget, 100% of it has been across social media. That's not limited to Facebook, Instagram. It's across the whole, the whole range of different social media platforms. We're constantly testing and moving and moving and shaking because you have to adapt, obviously. So with the noise, so if you're on, if you're on Facebook, if you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, Today we live in a society where we're mixed with Salt Bay, Cash Me Outside, cute little puppies, cute little dogs. How does your company, our company as a teeth whitening company, break that noise and how do we sell to you? I don't sell to you by going, we're high small, our product's $79.99, we're peroxide free, um, one month supply of gels, you notice results within two applications, blah, 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 blah. First of all, you don't give a shit what high small is, you don't even give a shit about teeth whitening, you don't give a shit about your teeth at this moment. You're looking at cute little dogs, Salt Bay, Cash Me Outside memes and things like that. So you're interested in, in tag, tagging your friends in funny content. So how do you, 
as a teeth whitening brand, whatever your service is, a pool cleaner, um, if you're Uber, if you're Apple, how do you break that noise? It's about putting interesting content and reverse engineering, engineering what your customer is looking for. So you start with brand. What is your brand? What does your brand stand for? And work out what message are you trying to portray? We're a teeth whitening company, so it's easy to go, we're looking to deliver results, we're looking to do this. Um, like I said, all the little key features about our product. But no one really cares. Your product should be able to do all those things before you enter the market. It's about the marketing. How do you get it out there and how do you get the attention of the mass and the eyeballs onto your brand? The idea behind it, you need to romance with brand first. You need to introduce your customer to brand prior to even questioning and introducing product. By creating brand, if we look, for, an ex for example, all the big brands today, the one thing they sell before they sell anything is their brand. You don't know Nike or Adidas or Apple because of one product. You know them because of their brand. They can bring out line after line after line. You're always going to be engaged with their brand as a brand. Now, that is what we need to start looking in first and foremost. Romancing with brand, creating that trust and creating that relationship through brand um, selling. So, again, you need to, going back to it, is understanding people, understanding that you're never, ever going to get attention if you go straight through to product. Now, I'm not saying you don't introduce product in the funnel, but it needs to come second and third tier. And we're, I think too much, it's being the focus of um, trying to sell product, product, product. And that's the one thing that, as we do these talks, we're seeing too many people ask, how do I sell my product? That needs to become the second um, level of sa sales. Yeah, I think it's just looking at what you want first and foremost as a person, really understanding what you want. A lot of people, when they go into their business, it's like, I'm putting all this money in, I want to get direct sales. Think long term, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You're not looking to convert the first person um, that you meet. It's almost like you're going on a date, you want to meet a chick, it's like, oh, all good, yeah, you walk up in the street. You don't just tap her on the shoulder, grab her by the hand and take her back to your house. Like, you're probably going to be locked up for that. Same thing goes in marketing. <laughs> Social media, Facebook, Instagram, I don't go on my page and do exactly what I said before. Blah, 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 this is my product, buy, 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 buy. Long gone are the days of old school sales tactics or upselling your product longer. People are smarter these days. We've got these phones for a reason. EQ these days, emotional intelligence, is more important than ever before. IQ, I can be as smart as Albert Einstein if I want. Ask me any question that's black and white and I'll give you the answer in one second. So IQ, well done. Like, you know where Serbia is, you know where Australia is, you know where capital cities are, you know all this stuff, but I, I'm just as smart with this. So that's where emotional intelligence comes in and that's where it's the grey zone. Understanding the grey zone, how do you understand that? It's by questioning things. Who, what, when, why, how. When you go to a cafe, there's one cafe here, one cafe there. You go to one cafe, it's packed. They sell the same, every cafe here sells smashed avocado with poached eggs and bacon. So everyone's selling the same stuff. Sure, quality, things like that make a difference, but one's packed, the other one's dead. One understands attention and what people want, the other doesn't. It's a it's the, whole, it's the whole thing. It's not just marketing. It's understanding people, connecting with people. It's the same thing that we do with our staff. We started with just myself, Alex, and Steph. Um, just the three of us started High Smile two and a bit years ago. To grow to a team now of 24, we have to understand each person and what their wants and what their needs are. Some people want to travel. Some people want to grow their careers quickly. So you have to understand not just marketing, but even when you're trying to build a team, it, HR is different today than what it was back in the day. People are a lot more flexible. People say, oh, millennials, they're lazy, they're this. They're just different. They're working. They can work at 12 a.m. at night on their mobile phones. Back in the day, you start at nine, you finish at five, you clock off, go get a drink, and you're done. These days, when we're dealing with Facebook, they've got a cool office, they've got Michelin star chefs, but our rep is sometimes working at home at 8 p.m., 1 a.m. just to be in touch with us. It's a whole... It's a different era, it's a different time that we're not only marketing in, but we're all living in. So I think you have to adjust and adapt with the change. As and you almost be, need to be addicted to looking, what is that next platform? What is the next way? Okay, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they're all there now, but what's next? Try and be the one on the pulse. And no matter what size your corporation is, no matter where you sit in that structure, it is up to you to be on the pulse and be the one, okay, this is what's next. And don't be too addicted to finding what is the direct result that this is going to cause. You need to be, think of it as an entire brand. And if I go back a step, what gives us high small the reason to stand out? There are 50 to 100 other teeth whitening brands out there selling a very similar product, 
Yet what makes us stand so much ahead of everyone, it's because we're so addicted to finding and being ahead of the curve with representing our brand. And I think that, not just our brand, but if you look, if you look at the big um, brands also for handbags, any big brand, the one thing that they've done better is they've represented their brand. And I think that's the first thing that you need to sit down and say, what do I stand for? What does my brand stand for? And how do I execute this on a top tier level to, the, to my customers on the platforms um, correctly. Further on, just from the change aspect and being able to adapt and almost be like a chameleon and move and shift with the market. Um, funny enough, we heard about this event about two, three months ago. We got approached to do this talk. At the time, myself and Alex, like you can see, we don't have a PowerPoint. There's no notes. We just sort of impromptu it. We just go, go with the flow and just feel whatever we're feeling at the time. We obviously discussed, like, oh, it'd be cool to talk about this. And at the time, Snapchat was hot. It was a thing. It was what we were, like, putting a lot of our eggs, like, were going towards Snapchat. Today, Instagram has implemented stories. Facebook's implementing stories. Messenger's got stories, which basically take over from Snapchat. They've got link-out abilities. They've got numbers and metrics. You've got more followers, chances are, on Facebook and Instagram. You can growth hack those platforms a lot better than you can. So three months ago, Snapchat was the it thing. Instagram and Facebook today have implemented those similar features. Had we have prepared for this and came here to talk about Snapchat, you guys probably would have clapped. It would have been cool. It still would have been probably interesting. But you're not getting your value as such if we're going to speak about Snapchat. So that's just how quickly things can change. Things change on a daily basis. Just today, um, I don't know if anyone knows, Instagram, if you update your phones, Instagram's now got almost like a carousel feature, whereas you, you can post like up to 10 photos on your feed it could mix with videos, boomerangs, photos, and it's about, un and just today, as soon as the feature came out, we had a, a meeting with our marketing team, addressed it, and we're already moving on that. We're already understanding how we're gonna use that next week. We're gonna test that out. And it's about not shying away from things, not being like, even on that Snapchat topic, it's like, oh, someone will sit back and go, oh, I told you to just focus on Instagram and Facebook. Snapchat's a thing of the past, or Vine, or things like that. The features off Snapchat are the same features now that Instagram and Facebook are using, the correct features, and if you had have played and tested Snapchat when it was around, when it was the it thing, you would understand exactly how to implement those things now. So it's about staying ahead of the curve, not being Nostradamus and predicting what's gonna be the next thing, just playing and actually investing your time. Too many people are lazy and doing what other people tell them. Take initiative and actually get started and actually involve yourself amongst these things. Definitely, get amongst and wanting to understand each and every platform. No matter how big or small you feel it is, if you feel there's the smallest entrance to represent your brand on it, you start looking and putting time into that. I can tell every single business here, no matter what you sell, if you are not already paying a lot of attention in social media, you will lose for sure. You have to, your next move has to be to focus a lot on social media. Now, the tactics, again, that's the gray zone. That's the part, how do I sell my brand? Whether I'm selling finance, whether I'm a doctor surgery, that's the question that you need to say, what do we stand for on a brand level and how can we now represent that message? That's a question I think everybody needs to be asking.